God, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Praise be to my Lord and my Creator and my Sustainer. I begin in His name and I begin in the name of my Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. And I send my peace and blessings to him and his holy family. I send my condolences to the Imam of my time, Imam al Mahdi al Muntadar, Ajrullah Ta'ala, Farajahu al Sharif. May Allah hasten his reappearance on this horrific, terrifying tragedy of the martyrdom of the Lady of Light, the Lady of all universes, my Lady, a Sayyida Fatima al Zahra, peace be upon her. We will be taking a journey, a journey with you, my dear viewers, a spiritual, emotional journey through time. We will be speaking about the merits and manaqib of my lady Fatima al Zahra, peace be upon her. We will be talking about her oppression and her tragedies to give you and the entire world the message of Lady Fatima. We want to send this message to the whole world, to tell the whole world about the oppression of Lady Fatima and about the pain that she went through and the tragedies that she faced and the message that she faced which is a universal message to all mankind. I begin in the Holy Quran by reciting the Holy Chapter in the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Kawthar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim إِنَّا أَعْطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرَ فَصَلِّدْ رَبِّكَ وَانْحَرْ إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْتَرَ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ This beautiful chapter in the Holy Quran, this chapter contains so much lessons, so much secrets, so much mystery. And we will try our best today to give a proper interpretation of this holy verse. Surah Al-Kawthar as Shaykh Al-Tabrasi states, he says that Surah Al-Kawthar is a Meccan verse. A Meccan verse meaning that it was revealed to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him and his holy family, in the holy city of Mecca. Surah Al-Kawthar is three verses. It is the shortest chapter in the Holy Quran, yet it is so eloquent and contains beautiful rhetoric and contains beautiful stories and contains beautiful lessons. This surah in the Holy Quran is one of the miracles of the Quran and the entire Quran is a miracle. It is one of the most beautiful chapters in the Quran and every single chapter in the Quran is beautiful. But each chapter has its merits. Each chapter tells us a story. He says that Surah Al-Kawthar is a Meccan verse, it's three three verses and it's a Meccan chapter then he begins Shaykh Al-Tabrasi in his Tafsir Majma' Al-Bayan he begins to give you a Tafsir of the main words found in this Surah Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala states that indeed O Muhammad we have given you Kawthar he begins to speak about Al-Kawthar he says Al-Kawthar in the Arabic language abundance of riches and sustenance he says, the offering, bestowal is either materialistic, meaning you have the asset at hand, or materialistic, but you do not own the asset at hand. Meaning there are many definitions for Kawthar. He says again, and he continues to the second part of the line. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, O Muhammad, we have given you kawthar, offer sacrifice and prayer to Allah, and the one whom insults you is, he's the one who is abtar. al shani in Arabic means the insulter, the one who carries enmity, the one who carries hatred towards you, O Muhammad. Then he gives a definition of abtar. He says in the Arabic language, they say the mule is abtar, meaning the mule has his tail cut off. Meaning again, that for example, we say Fulan, Zaid, gave a speech. He gave an incomplete speech. He gave a speech that was abtar, meaning that Zaid 
did not begin his speech by praising and glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zayd did not begin his speech by praising Muhammad and sending peace and blessings upon Muhammad and his holy progeny. Meaning his speech was incomplete, his speech was abtar. This is basically the main words that we take from this surah. Of course, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and offer prayer and sacrifice the nahar in this case in the ahadith it's either a sacrifice or according to the hadith of Ahlul Bayt peace be upon them the nahar here as well means to stand in the face of the qibla or the other definition to raise your hands when you do takbir meaning ya muhammad i have given you this abundance of kothar so what you should do is offer sacrifice offer prayer and this sacrifice is your prayer, your time. This is basically a quick definition on some main words found in this holy chapter. Next, the revelation. What is the reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse to Muhammad, peace be upon him and his holy family? Shaykh al Tabrasi states, he says, it was revealed upon Muhammad, peace be upon him and his holy progeny, when a man by the name of Al-As ibn Wa'il al-Shami, as Rasulullah was exiting the masjid in Mecca, he followed him and began speaking to him. When Al-As returned to the masjid, there was a group from Quraysh sitting, and they asked him, who were you speaking to? He said, Al-As, he said, I was speaking to that Abtar, that one who has no progeny. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, had just lost his son Abdullah, whom Khadija bore for him. He was in a state of sadness that the people of Quraysh, the people of Quraysh and the tribesmen at the time were insulting him, saying, Ya Muhammad, you have no progeny and they would speak to him in this insulting matter. Another tafsir of the tanzil, of the revelation which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this verse is narrated by a siyuti in his Durr al-Manthur. He says, Ibn Sa'ad, Ibn Asakir from Al-Kalbi, from Abi Salih, from Ibn Abbas, he said, the children of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were first Al-Qasim, then Zainab, then Abdullah, then Umm Kalthum, then Fatima, then Ruqayya. Al-Qasim died, followed by Abdullah, and that is when Al-As said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are Abtar, you have no progeny, you have nobody or Rasulullah to carry your name throughout the generations. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. He said, Ya Rasulullah, inna a'taynaka al-kawthar. We have given you this abundance. We have given you this abundance in riches and sustenance. Then he said, offer sacrifice, O Muhammad. Offer sacrifice and prayer for your insulter, Al-As, Abu Lahab, and the rest of Quraysh. They're the ones whom progeny is cut off. They're the ones who have nobody to carry their name. It's true. Al-As, Abu Lahab, and others in the progeny that attacked Rasulullah really were destroyed and died a horrible death. They died a horrible death, truly they did. And it's even narrated that the son that Al-As had was not truly his son. It's only he was ascribed to him. So, as you can see, the surah has a cause and effect that the prophecy happened. And Al-As and Abu Lahab and the rest of Quraysh were destroyed. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah, the apostle of Allah, still lives till today in our streets all over the world. You see now, there comes discussion. What is Al-Kawthar? Discussion here is important because the hadith say, from the meaning of kawthar in the Arabic language in the ahadith, meaning the abundance of riches and sustenance. The hadith states by Imam Sadiq and by others, entire school of Islam from the different sects, from the khasa and from the amma, that it is a river in paradise or a pond in paradise. 
its color more white than the milk and more sweeter than the honey. Castles by it. The rocks in the river, in the pond are made of emerald and ruby. And whoever reads Surah Al-Kawthar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will tell Rasulullah on the day of judgment to give him a glass to drink from this beautiful, this beautiful water found in paradise. It is important to narrate this hadith before I go into the actual meaning and tafsir of Surah Al-Kawthar and that Surah Al-Kawthar is Fatima al-Zahra, peace be upon her. A hadith narrated in Bukhari, it says, the Prophet says that he told his companions, he said, I am your predecessor at the lake font of Al-Kawthar and some men from amongst you, the Sahaba companions will be brought to me and then I will try to hand them some water. They will be pulled away from me by force and I will begin to say, Oh Allah, my companions, my companions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh Muhammad, you do not know what they have innovated after you. You do not know what they have did after you. This is a very important here. Those who claim that the companions were all just and they will all be granted paradise. This hadith is found in the most authentic books of Ahlul Khilaf. And here Rasulullah says that I want to go and give them a glass of water from the pond of Kawthar and I want to drag them with me but they will be dragged away and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says لا تدري ما أحدثوا بعدك يا رسول الله they created many innovations. It's important to note this. Even though it's not in our topic, I brought this topic because it is concerned with Surah Al-Kawthar. Now, we have to get to the end, which is what does Surah Al-Kawthar point to? Why is Surah Al-Kawthar Fatima al-Zahra, peace be upon her? If we had more time, we would dive into Surah Al-Kawthar and give you examples and from Surah Al-Kawthar, how Surah Al-Kawthar, the smallest surah in the Quran, has given itself is a miracle. Itself is a miracle. And if we had the time, we would come and talk about the surah in the Holy Quran. But unfortunately, we don't have the time. But Surah Al-Kawthar itself can prove to the entire world that there is a creator because of the eloquence in the surah because of the literary terms in the surah. Now, we will talk about Fatima al-Zahra, peace be upon her, being al-Kawthar. Why? What does the surah have to do with Fatima al-Zahra, peace be upon her? The answer is simple. إِنَّ عَطَيْنَاكَ الْكَوْثَرْ فَصَلِّ رَبِّكَ وَنْحَرْ إِنَّ شَانِئَكَ هُوَ الْأَبْتَرْ O Muhammad, we have given you this abundance which is Fatima al-Zahra, peace be upon her. We have given you this abundance, which is Fatima al-Zahra, peace be upon her. And O Muhammad, this durriya, this progeny, will live through Fatima al-Zahra. Al-Kawthar is prophethood and wilaya. Al-Kawthar is Fatima al-Zahra. Through Fatima al-Zahra, wilaya will continue. Why? Because Fatima al-Zahra is the mother of the Imams. And to t till today, in Canada, in America, in Europe, in Africa, in the Middle East, all over the world, we have a dhurriya of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Till today, they walk the streets outside. This is, a, this is the divine message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given Rasulullah a progeny, a dhurriya till today. And this is the true meaning of Kawthar. Fatima al-Zahra, peace be upon her, is the manifestation Fatima al-Zahra is the meaning. Fatima al-Zahra is the interpretation. Fatima al-Zahra is the tafsir and the ta'wil of Surah Al-Kawthar. That is all we have for you today. We will continue, insha'Allah, in a different episode. So make sure to join me. Peace be upon you, O Muhammad. Peace be upon you, O Fatima al-Zahra. Peace be upon you, my master, Imam al-Mahdi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Ooh.